Okay, um, some more practice problems, and if, if you've got all this, you can skip on to the ninth video, and that's where we, we'll start with solids of evolution, but the region above bounded by y equals 2 root x, so this curve right here, 2 root x, and y equals x, so this, this line down here, is the base of a solid S. If the cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are equilateral triangles, so we have the x-axis here, equilateral triangles, what is the volume of the solid? So if I were to lay this down a little bit flatter, we could see, so let's do that. So put it down a little flatter, we get this shape, okay. And we're talking about perpendicular to the x-axis here, so equilateral triangles. So perpendicular to the x-axis means we make planar cuts right down here. So planar cuts right down there. Well, that's an awful plane, but whatever, okay. And they're equilateral triangles. Okay, so that means that all three sides are congruent, all three angles are congruent. Uh, we know all that stuff, and so any one of these cross sections will be equilateral triangles. And my solid will look something like, like this. Again, like a, I don't know, something aerodynamic-y. Okay, so let's look at this now. We have this cross section, and that would make this cut, and that's going to be S, the side length of an equilateral triangle. Now, I know the formula for the area of an equilateral triangle off the top of my head, but you might not. So let's do a quick rundown on that. So we have an equilateral triangle. Let me actually make that bigger so we can really see what's going on. I'll have room. I'll scrunch it in over here. Okay, so equilateral triangle. Side length, side length, side length. And we know that the, the area of this triangle in terms of some base and height, neither of which we might see right away, base is probably going to be S, uh, is going to be one-half base height, one-half base times height. Okay, and here's how we get to an area formula for this. I'll drop an altitude, and I know right here, altitudes are perpendicular, I know that this is 60 degrees, I know this is 30 degrees, and so it's a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, this half of this side is S over 2, which means this altitude, which will be my height, will be S root 3 over 2, so the base will be S, the height will be s over 2, oh wait, sorry, s root 3 over 2, and that means my area in terms of the side length is going to be, it's going to be s squared root 3 over 4. This is going to be fun to do by hand, but hey. Okay. Next thing, I need to find this S. I don't want it in terms of S. I want it in terms of X. And I'm going to actually use any X going from 0 up to, in this case, 4. We know it's 4 because 2 root X will equal X at 0 and 4. You can solve this equation. You can square both sides, get 4X. E that looks like a Y. Let's try that again. X equals X squared and X equals zero. Let's put or instead of and. Zero or four. Okay, because that's where my endpoints are and we'll use that in the next video as well. Okay, the side length of this 
equilateral triangle will be the top curve minus the bottom curve. So I know that my side length equals the top curve is 2 root x. The bottom curve is x. And now my area func formula in terms of any x that I'm using to cut this solid area in terms of x will equal this squared, which is a lot like what we did earlier. I'm going to write it out already. So that squared is going to be x squared minus 4x to the 3 halves, because we'll have x root x, which is x times x to the 1 half, we get 3 halves, um, plus 4x, all times root 3 over 4. Constant multiple, it's not going to be a problem. Okay, now, let's jump into our formula. So we know for volume, the volume of this solid, since we are making cuts perpendicular to the x-axis, we're going to take an integral from 0 to 4 of the area in terms of x, which we just found, dx, which is going to be like a very infinitesimally small height of this triangular prism is what it's going to make, um, which will then equal the integral from 0 to 4 of pull in my area function, which is x squared minus 4x to the 3 halves plus 4x times root 3 over 4 dx. Okay, two things. First thing, I'm going to take this root 3 over 4 all the way out, so I don't need to worry about it anymore. And, well, I will need to worry about it, but not till the end. Okay, and then I'll take the antiderivative all in one fell swoop, so I will get x cubed over 3 minus, I add 1 to this, so I get x to the 5 halves. I divide by 5 halves, which is the same as multiplying by 2 fifths, so I get 8 fifths because of this 4 multiplied by the 2. And then I get x squared over 2, so I get 2x squared. I'm going to evaluate that from x equals 0 to x equals 4. And we'll go on. So that's going to equal. I still have my root 3 over 4. I'll put in the 4. 4 cubed gives me 64 divided by 3, so 64 thirds. Um, this we talked about last time. Um, 4 to the 5 halves is the square root of 4, 2. To the 5th, 2 to the 5th is 32 times 8, let me see, 64, 120, 256 over 5. Okay, and 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32, so we have a much bigger area of this, or actually, maybe not, that's negative, so, but, um, so 16 times 2 is 32, and I didn't show this in the last one, but we still do have a minus 0 when I put 0 into all these, just doesn't really make a difference, so I'll just cross it off right now, okay, um, Least common denominator across the board for this is going to be 15. So I get root 3 over 4 multiplied by, so I need to multiply this by 5, that gives me 320 over 15. Multiply this by 3, so let's see, 2, 7, 5, 7, 68 over 15. And then I have to do 32 times 15. Well, 30 times 15 gives me 
um, 450 plus 230, 480 over 15. So plus 480 over 15. Okay, so that will equal root 3 over 4 multiplied by 320 plus 480 will give me 800 minus 768 gives me 32 over 15. And when I multiply these, the 32 and the 4, if you remember from whatever that is, preschool or wherever we learned this, uh, probably not preschool, but that gives me 8 and 1. So we get 8 root 3 over 15. I sure hope that's right. I will check before I post it.